Title 2 May 2024 TOK essay. This one sucks. Like, I'm not kidding. This one sucks. If you've chosen this title, first of all, why? Second of all, I got your back. I've got some downloads. I'm going to give you my notes. Let's get an A in TOK. Get an A in TOK. This year, for the first time, I'm giving away all of my notes. So the document that I'm going to um, go through in this video is available in the description. You can download it. You can share it with your friends. Don't share it with your friends. Don't help them out. You can see everything I'm doing. There are so many links in here that are going to get you started with, the, with your research, okay? Secondly, though, I have so many other resources. First of all, if you need extra help, if you want to Zoom with this guy, if you want to send me your essay, you can hit me up at Fiverr. The link's in the description. Fiverr.com slash Pat Freakin Jones. I've got a lot of organizers and examples that I can share with you. That's available at getanantok.com slash free stuff. And if your TOK teacher is like most, not me, but if your TOK teacher kind of sucked and you need to just see a whole bunch of examples and help and research, um, you can sign up for TOK Masterclass. It's the only on-demand online TOK course in the world. It's with me. I give you all of my research away. You can get um, a 25% discount using YouTube. I'm um, using coupon code YouTube subscriber. I'll hook you up there, but get in touch with me. Let me know if you need any help. Um, I would love to connect with you, do some Zoom tutoring, okay? But first of all, pause this video, download the document that I'm going to take us through, and let's get started, okay? Like right now, like actually download it because I'm showing my screen. You can see my screen, like download it now. Okay, go. Okay, so first of all, I got the links here that you can look at. And let's take a look at title number two. That's totally wrong. I need to paste in the right title. I'm going to do some movie magic now. Hey, how'd that happen? Okay, I fixed my title. It, you will have the correct one on there. Let's check it out. How can we reconcile the opposing demands for specialization and generalization in the production of knowledge? Okay, I actually wrote some stuff that wasn't the production of knowledge, so uh, make sure you're focused on that. Discuss with reference to maths and one other area of knowledge. Okay, so first of all, this is among the hardest TOK titles I've ever seen. I created this whole document with examples and some ideas, some approaches. It took me longer than any title I've ever made resources for. Okay, so this is challenging for me. It's gonna be challenging for you. But I got your back. Let's take a look at the things I came up with. Okay, my thoughts on the title. So first of all, your goal is not to present evidence. Your goal is to come up with a way of reconciling these demands. So all examples should feed on the how question. So how do we reconcile the opposing demands? I will tell you how to reconcile that, okay? There's gonna be a lot of people that just write an essay on is specialization or generalization good or bad. That's not what we're talking about here. That's part of it, that's part of it, but that's not everything we're talking about, okay? So what we wanna do with that is for each piece of evidence, address why it might be good to be special and be general. That's good. Bring up the benefits, then come up with a way of reconciling the demand. Reconciling, um, I'm called to do this and this. So what should we do? Also, this title is a challenge. Don't do it unless you really want to. Honestly, um, I don't know why anybody would choose this. One and three are some of the easiest titles I've ever um, seen. So I would check those out and watch all of my videos, but yeah. Okay, so specialization in math. Let's make a page break there. Okay, so I've got a whole bunch of YouTube videos here. Um, you can download this um, document in the description if you haven't yet. I don't know why, but this is talking about the differences between pure and applied maths. These are two different specialties in maths. I'm not sure if they actually exist though, because I think that anything um, pure math, so math that doesn't have an application, we may not have the application now, okay? So in math, when we're thinking about mathematicians and professors, mathematicians are really, there is that demand to specialize, okay? So um, I would say that one of the demands now for applied maths is how we can use it in the technology industry. And that demand is because there's lots of money, okay? So check out those two specializations. If you wanna get really weird and feel like you're doing drugs, take a look at Max Tegmark, is reality a mathematical structure? He believes that everything we call like the, the real world is like a math equation. So his approach demonstrates the um, demand for specialization. If he's right, he can explain the most important question. He can explain um, 
and this is kind of general too, but he is able to give a very special, he's specializing in one specific thing so that he can provide a very, very big answer. Now we're gonna come back to that later because what we could argue if you wanted to is that his answer coming from specialization is actually a very general answer. And that's what we're gonna see when we get to theoretical physics. So another video that you can check out, and the link is just right here, is let's be honest about mathematics. So there's a lot of debate about how math works in economics. So um, there's a lot of economists in this video that talk about how math works in econ. So if you specialize in math in the field of economics, that you have a lot of power. And what it means is you can use math to um, manipulate statistics. You can use math to be confusing. You can also use math to make it seem more scientific than it really is. So um, is that good or is that bad? And so if we're needing to be specialized in maths to um, accomplish these very specific tasks, like explain a specific thing about the economy, um, how do we reconcile that with, with, with needing to be general? Well, we gotta talk about what, what general means first. So, in math, there is a direct application for specialization. I would totally focus on this, whether we're talking about what Max Tegmark believes about the universe, which is wild, or just what math can do in economics. So you can often do something additional when you specialize in math. Application creates the demand. Okay, so now we get to generalization, and Michio Kaku is probably the most famous theoretical physicist it's because of a book that he wrote. We're going to get to that in a minute. But um, he has a um, video. This is a really short, I'll just show it here. Um, a Some people yeah, ask the question. Five minutes. Uh, a really short um, five minute video talking about is God a mathematician? And um, what we can think about is that this is specializing again in what math does. So in this video, Kaku shares about how one AOK -okay doesn't exist independently of others. So he explores how physics and math intersect. As a theoretical physicist, he might say he's not a specialist because what he does applies everywhere. So when we think about generalization, we're thinking um, this knowledge can be used everywhere. It has general application. So in the production of knowledge, what, what I am doing has many different ways of, 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 of applying. So um, understanding the process of generalization and mathematics through activity theory, this is a really different approach and I, I really, really like this. So in this article, and this is a long article, you'll sound so smart if you use this. The article is saying that generalization and she's specifically talking about math has two helpful applications. First of all, it helps us transmit information. You'll need to tie that into production somehow. And secondly, it provides the building blocks for more demanding problems and proofs. So what this is saying is that if we have the general knowledge, we are able to produce more knowledge because of that general knowledge, okay? So what we've got here is we, we've, we've got, remember, what we don't want. We've got examples, where is it? Okay, we've got examples of general and examples of being specialized. So what we need to do now is how do we reconcile these two? I've got very specific knowledge to do very specific things, or I've got general knowledge that can do a whole lot of stuff and explain things or, 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 or break ground or build, be building blocks for new knowledge. How do we reconcile the fact that both are important? That's what we're gonna have to talk about, and I'll get to that later on at the end, the conclusion section. But uh, I've got, I would focus on one of the two sciences, for examples that I'm gonna give you in a minute, I would totally use this next thing. But um, I, as I was thinking about it, I wouldn't use history and I wouldn't use art because I don't think that you're gonna find many examples of artists who are producing knowledge that is generalized. Um, I, I just don't think it's there. So I think that this title, even though it says one other area of knowledge, you really wanna do one of the two sciences now let me tell you why. There is a huge pressure to produce in science. And what that means is that nobody becomes famous, nobody gets published, nobody um, gets a book deal because they made a discovery that confirmed a theory that we already believed. Nobody's getting a publishing deal or become getting tenure because they said, hey, I confirmed that gravity exists. It, it, it's just not happening, right? And so what happens is, scientists are pressured by um, publication demands and universities to come up with very big ideas, very new ideas, very potentially groundbreaking ideas. And so to do that, 
to come up with a new discovery of a new drug, of a new uh, psychological claim. You, you, you have to um, be specialized in a specific thing. And so these articles address the demand to produce groundbreaking discovery. So all three of these, this one's in the LA Times, it's talking about how striking studies, so studies that, um, what was it, have a very large effect, they rarely are actually true, okay? Um, and then these other two articles, they are talking about the same thing, skip verification i don't know why that's working there so academic pressure can cook up dubious science research so this is about the same thing these are not articles that i would necessarily use as your main source but these are articles that are going to get you started okay so i would use all of these start learning about this issue science under pressure so i'm under pressure to produce a very groundbreaking huge specialized claim and then find some examples of your own so in the human sciences, though, specialized knowledge is not in demand, and this is very unique to the human sciences. Scientists look to produce knowledge that explains all of humanity, not a specialized group. So, so an example that, that, we, that I always use is let's say that you were an anthropologist and you went and studied an unreached people group that have never been studied before. You're learning about them. When you learn things about them, are you learning just about them? Or are you learning about how all humanity interacts to certain stimuli? Um, human scientists, they don't want to create a discovery about how a small people group reacts. They want to produce knowledge that is general and explains all of humanity. There, there is no demand for human science knowledge that, doesn't, um, that, that isn't general. It just doesn't happen. So going back to Michio Kaku, his book, The God Equation, I've got the Wikipedia article here and then also um, – an hour-long interview with him by this woman at Powell's Books in Portland, all right, in Pacific Northwest. Um, if you want to explore Kaku more, you can ex you can learn about his claims in the God Equation. He isn't focused on explaining specialized knowledge, but rather explaining all of reality. In 11 Dimensions, he, he believes that we exist in 11 Dimensions in that string theory or something. I, I totally don't get it, but I don't have to. I'm not looking at what he's saying. I'm looking at the claims that he's making and these generalized claims that he's producing. Why isn't he creating specialized claims? One of the things that I would say is this. Would Kaku be as famous if he was claiming something more specialized? No, probably not. He also wouldn't be as famous if he didn't have cool hair. His hair is awesome. Um, we are interested because he is making a large general claim about existence. So this goes back to the pressure to produce. If we're thinking about that, that and it's just interesting the wording here, um, the opposing demands. Who is making these demands? Kaku is famous because he's producing this knowledge that is so general it explains all of creation or at least it attempts to. So that's the demand there is he, he, he got famous. Um, okay, where are we? The last one. Oh yeah, think about specialized knowledge. So I'll give an example here that you shouldn't use and then you can use your own example. So to find something about specialized knowledge, you can research um, any discovery in the natural sciences. So think about discoveries that are so focused and specialized on one thing that they discovered that, that just that one issue. So um, it could branch out into other ideas, but think about people who are studying one thing to come up with one discovery. I'll use an easy example here. So if we're thinking about the discovery of DNA, do not use this example. Everybody uses this example because they don't think about it. You've got Barbara McClintock. I think that's how you spell her name. I'll fix that before I upload this document. And Watson and Crick, we see that there was a demand to explain genetics. They were looking to explain traits. They're, they're specializing in one thing to produce specialized knowledge. McClintock was looking to explain corn. She was just trying to figure out um, why do corn, why, why does corn look different? So if they were trying to explore something more general, they probably wouldn't have found anything. So with specializations in the sciences, you run the risk of not making this, the discoveries if you are too generalized in what you are trying to produce. So again, that's just the first step now. We see the demand. The demand is to make discoveries. So how do we um, reconcile that? Here are my thoughts. So now we have a few examples of specializing in things or using general knowledge in different contexts. We can understand that mathematical knowledge is in demand. All of these are necessary. So in mass, I would say that even though they are opposing demands, you have to have both. So we might say if you could only have one or the other, what should we do? Um, how do we reconcile the need for both? Uh, one option, I'll give you two, 
is to say that we shouldn't reconcile it. I would just say you don't. I, I don't think that we say that one is um, better. Th I, th I think that we could say one is better than the other, and this is a valid approach. So you say, we shouldn't reconcile it. We go this way. We shouldn't reconcile it because specialized knowledge is way more important. You then, you, this is kind of going a weird way, so you justify your opinion by saying it is more important because this, and then you evaluate. And you say reconciliation doesn't need to happen. You might not want to do that, kind of risky. So another option might be to explore how there might not be that big of a difference. Again, these aren't the only two right answers, but you could talk about this. So maybe specialization can lead to generalization. I really think that's true. Or can generalization lead to specialization? Can we say we don't have to reconcile it because they work really well together? Maybe one is the natural result of the other. Looking at how pure maths and geometry can be applied in other fields may show that specialization, so focusing on geometry, could just be a myth because it can then be applied to many other things. So those are my ideas. If you're still confused, send me your draft, fiverr.com slash patfreakinjones. Check out getanantok.com slash free stuff. That's free organizers and help there that I would love to give you for free. Um, use my organizers. It will really help you out. And um, take this document, download it, share it with all of your friends. And I hope that TOK sucks a little bit less than it did at the beginning of this video. Cheers. I'll see you next time.